15-102. So Mitchell has only played for the Cavs for a couple of months, and he <laughs> already has two of the highest scoring games by a Cavalier player going up against a LeBron James team. The 43 points are the second most by a Cavalier in any game since LeBron left for L.A. in 2018. Here's Donovan Mitchell after the game. You know, you always... Like, it doesn't matter who it is. You always want to spoil the homecoming. Like, I think that's that's just a competitor, and you always want to do that. But it's crazy. Like, you know, I grew up watching him here. It's definitely an honor to be out there and, you know, to play against one of the greats and to get a dub, too, in front of – in his home in his hometown and, and in front of our home crowd. He has exceeded all things that, you know, we thought and what people had said about him. Um, it's not easy to be as talented as he is and to fit as seamlessly as he does. Mitchell is just, he's Mitchell. I mean, he did a, he did a great job of uh, penetrating our gaps, uh, you know, making some tough shots all night and getting to a real good comfort. But, um, you know, he's, he's a special kid. There's so many directions that we could go out of this game. There's so much to digest here. But since you were an NBA champion with the Cavaliers, I guess we're obligated to start with you here. Well, what was your biggest <laughs> takeaway from last night, Rich? Uh, one, again, it's, it sucks that Anthony Davis wasn't able to continue this stretch. They're, and you know in the NBA, flus start popping up everywhere. Everyone's sharing the same ball. Everything's happening. So I, I, I'm and this even, time of the year. And this time of the year. So I'm not going to be critical of him there. So that, that, that part is tough. But when you switch the Cavs and you look at the balance of their team, and I don't think that there are uh, a team that's complete. I do believe that they're one or two pieces, maybe a gritty defensive player, a 3 and D guy. I think that's the only thing that they are missing. But as far as star power with Donovan Mitchell, you got multiple young bigs, Kevin Love off the bench. They're going to get Ricky Rubio back at some point in time. So they just have such a balanced team, and I love it because of, of the – the charisma that their young guys had. No egos with Darius Garland. No ego with Jared Allen. No ego with a ton of these guys. And Donovan Mitchell is able to come in and be a leader. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell has taken the next step with his maturation as an all-star in the NBA. Right now, he's averaging 29 points per game, which a couple, maybe a week or so ago we were saying like he's top five in MP MVP consideration. Also, by far, he has his highest field goal percentage at 49.6, his by far highest three-point field goal percentage at 42.4%. But a lot of the criticism around Donovan Mitchell and based on what happened in Utah was like, okay, he's a volume offensive player. Like, how he's going to fit into a foundation that is really set with these young guys that are capable and he's proven to take that next step because if you look at what their offense was in uh, 2020 28th last year goes to 20th now they're 10th they're winning right he's a candidate for everything that you can think of when you think about leaders and the direction of this franchise he's delivered so far on what this big move has been for him personally so I think he should get a little bit more respect for what he's done I and couldn't imagine a team yeah, passing what? up on him Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's two, two things. One, New York, <laughs> but not just the Knicks, who I thought maybe two or three days before Cleveland did the deal with Utah, I thought New York was right at the doorstep mm. and they would get a deal done. It is rare in this league with a trade of that magnitude that teams walk away from each other given they just weren't very yeah. far apart. I think New York thought that the Jazz didn't really have another trade partner. They could revisit it. The deal with Cleveland gets done 48 hours later. But I think back to uh, Donovan Mitchell's a Davis press conference. I went into Cleveland and watching him that day, he was working out with his teammates. They were kind of doing offseason. Mm -hmm. um, everybody on the court, they had been in Nashville the week before yeah. uh, with Darius Garland in his hometown. And the way that Donovan Mitchell went into Cleveland and said, I am going to fit into your team, into your chemistry. And there is a lot of talent there. Mm. And there has been no growing pains at all. No real adjustment for how these guys would play with each other. I think it's a credit not just to Donovan Mitchell, but J.B. Bickerstaff. And I think the attitude, the spirit of that Cavaliers group. Well, you know, just talking to J.B. Bickerstaff after the game, he said Donovan Mitchell's better than people even realize. He's better than advertised. Mm. He's, everybody knew he could score. But I think what they didn't realize is how good of a player he was as a complete player. J.B. was saying he, he orchestrates the, the game. He knows what his teammates need in those in different moments and what they need in that spot. And, and I think that's something that we didn't know. You always saw him as a scorer. You know, he was a slam dunk champion. Mm -hmm. But to have that feel for how his teammates need to play and what, he need, what they need from him, that's something that I don't even know the Cavs realized they were getting. Right. Yeah, and I, I'm not, this is not even going to be critical of Quinn Snyder. But I, when talking to J.B., he says, like, look, 
there was some talk about can he play defense? How good is he defense? If he's just going to be scored? But he's done everything that they have asked of him defensively mm -hmm. also. And he's used to having bigs behind him. Yep. Yeah. He's used to having shot blockers behind him. So right. he knows how to play that style of like, hey, I'm going to guard. But they've also challenged him to a little bit more of like, hey, we're, we're this isn't just funnel everything to Rudy Gobert. We have shot blockers, but our one-on-one -on -one defense needs to be better. And I think he's done a very good job of leading by example in that category. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.